Well, brothers and sisters, it is Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> Woo! And here at St. Faustina, the spirit is high. Let's turn off the light and see that spirit for a moment. Touchdown! Well, we are kicking off this weekend our Super Bowl Capital Camping to finally build our church. I, yeah. So, I have here something very precious. This, this, uh, this football. On it, it has our our mark. It has the. The, uh, the logo of our church, and it said, Building Our Center of Divine Mercy, St. Faustina Catholic Church. Brothers and sisters, this is collectible. <laughs> yeah, because you will never have the capital campaign to build the church again. It is one historical time in our church, which I'm going to give away three today. Who wants this football? Who wants this football? Woo! Oh! Wow, who won? I'm not, I'm not too good of a quarterback. Who won this football? Woo! Woo! Yeah! <laughs> I, have, I have to tell you this, you know, uh, I was, uh, Father, uh, Father Christopher and I was filming this football uh, play and uh, we invited Monsignor. Now, Father Christopher and Monsignor are two opposite beings. <laughs> One of them talk and have a lot of energy, and Monsignor is very quiet, very calm. I'm a good, happy medium between the two of them, you know? <laughs> and so we were, we were throwing it, and I caught it, and I was shocked. <laughs> he goes, Touchdown! <laughs> you know, I, I, was, I could only imagine. I, I was thinking of today's reading. When Jesus touched that leper and healed him, as he walked away, if in the time of Jesus there was Super Bowl Sunday like today, I could imagine Jesus go, touchdown! <laughs> but to, have, to, to help us understand that, I, I want to, uh, I want to, uh, I'm going to make one of my, one of my alkali a leper today. So, Carlos, why don't you come forward? Here, you, you oh, okay, give, give me that, give me that. You, you're just a leper. Come sit over there on top here, okay. <laughs> okay, so in the time of Jesus, as you know, a leprosy is the most feared disease. It may not kill you, but it is so dehumanizing. It is a kind of disease that it begins to spread all over the body, and in some cases, it begins to eat up your flesh and make it rotten. And it's so scary because it can, it's contagious, and people are afraid of them. So according to the law, when someone have this disease, they have to be quarantined. They have to be isolated from the community. Imagine this. Imagine you come home from work one day and suddenly you found something on your hand and gradually it starts spreading and spreading and spreading. And before you know it, you are taken away from your spouse, your children, your family, and your church. And you have to live outside the city. Many of them began to live in caves or in small quarter where lepers live together. Now, according to the, the book of Leviticus, chapter 13, we heard some of that in the first reading today, when someone have leprosy and are uh, uh, isolated, they have to first uh, wear, they, are, they have to wear ragged clothes. I do not have ragged clothes, so I am taking the trash bag. <laughs> they have to wear ragged clothes, yeah, not, they have to wear ragged. There he is. They have to wear ragged clothes, 
And it says that they have to literally in public wear ragged clothes. They have to cover their head and their beard. Now, in the time of Jesus, that was something, a, a dignity of a man. He has to cover it. And when, whenever someone approaches, he has to scream, unclean, unclean, so that people won't come close. But on that day, something amazing happened. As Jesus was walking by, this leper came to him. And St. Mark tells us that it takes so much courage. He came over, he came over to Jesus, and he knelt down before him. You could imagine, he was even afraid to look at him. And then he asked Jesus, if you will, you can heal me. And St. Mark described it so beautifully. He went to great length to describe these details. The Lord Jesus moved with pity, compassion. He stretched out his hands and touched him. Now imagine, his hands perhaps rotten. He touched him. He touched him and he said, I do will it be clean. Brothers and sisters, this touch right here, this touch, this is the meeting place between heaven and earth. This is where our misery meets God's mercy. This is where the darkness of our sin touches the transformative light of God's holiness. This touch right here is what gives me today as your pastor every audacity and conviction to make a pitch to you. Together, let us build this place where every day, day in and day out, week in and week out, this touch is happening. You are healed now. You can go. You can go. I want to tell you two miracles, two miracles that happened. And you can see God's hands in it. Nine and a half years ago, Cardinal Donato sent me out here to start a parish. I have no idea what to do and where to begin. I drove out here. I spotted, I looked for this, this spot of empty land on the map. I drove in here. I drive out here, and there's a little, little driveway, drive, drive, driveway, cut. I drove into it, and it, in front of the fence, I got out of the car, and I pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet. And I said, Lord, I consecrate this land, this people, and this Paris to your divine mercy. Mercy. Then I got back into the car and keep driving toward Wallace because at the time we have nothing. I was homeless. And the priest in the next church said I can come and stay with him. A few weeks later, we have our first mass. And it was in the cafeteria of Joe Hubernack Elementary School. Now, I, a number of you were here when we celebrate Mass in the school. How many of you were there in the school? Raise your hands. Okay. Look at a good number of them. And God, since that time, think about this. In that cafeteria, it sat about 600 people, and we had two Mass, 5 o'clock on Saturday and 10 a.m. on Sunday. The Lord bless us with incredible growth giving us the awesome opportunity to keep welcoming more and more people to our parish. Brothers and sisters, today, out of the generosity of God's people in this building that double the cafeteria in the school, 1,400, we go from two mass in this, to this big building that sits 1,400 
to seven masses in the weekend, besides the first two morning masses, all of our masses are getting full. Look at this church right now. We have hundreds of people sitting in the other building joining us for Mass, and we bring communion over there, and the Masses are starting to be like that already. We have been blessed with incredible growth, and we have a big problem. We can't accommodate everybody. And you and I know that this area continues to grow so rapidly. It's incredible. And here's the amazing thing. Almost 10 years later, we are starting to pray, to, to envision, and to draw. I want to now turn up the light and show you what we are about to build together. So if we look at that beautiful, this is our vision for that church. That's, and then as you walk into that plaza to go to the church, I want you to now look up and see in this slide, look up at that that arch, that statue of divine mercy. Now remember, some, in God's miraculous way, we came up with, from the very beginning, the mission of St. Faustina being the community where the love and mercy of God is lived, experienced, and shared. Look up that as you walk to that church. This divine mercy, a lot taller than Father Christopher and Monsignor Borsky, 16 foot tall. His hand raising out to bless and welcome, the other hand touched to his heart, from which radiate this transforming light and grace, welcoming us into the church. And as we walk into that church, in this very place, day in and day out, week in and week out, and for generations to come, that touch is going to take place. And that's what we are invited to do, to be part of this beautiful dream that is given to us from the Lord. Now, I want to turn off the light on the light now and tell you the second miracle for us to build that beautiful center of divine mercy, it will, it will cost us about $40 million. Now, it sounds scary, but what we need to do is we need to raise $18 million in order to be able, we need to have $18 million in pledge in order for us to be able to begin construction. Before we open it up to the parish today, I, we reach out to a number of families who've been very generous to our parish, and we asked them if they could help us to, to pledge to, to be able to set momentum for our parish. And I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, as of today, out of about 250 families, we already are halfway through 50% with an excess of $9 million in pledge. That is a miracle, yes. Yes, yes brothers and sisters, generosity inspire. I am so grateful to those families, so grateful. Generosity inspire. And I am convinced that God take our generosity, He will multiply it, and allow the blessing to be given to many, many, many people. And that's what I'm asking you, my dear people of St. Faustina, to do. So, we have about 620 registered family in this parish. This week, I sent out 6,000 letters to all the families in our parish. And I want to ask you, I want to ask you that every one of you is very important to me and to this dream. I would like for everybody to be part of this dream. When you get this letter, when you open up inside, you will see my letter with an ask amount. When you read it, I want you to know that amount is a starting point. For some of you, 
It may not be. It might be a lot. For some of you, you can give beyond that. What I want to ask you to do is this. Take a moment to pray. Pray over it. And ask, Lord, with the blessing you have given me, how do I participate in this? In a way that is prayerful, meaningful, and sacrificial. And I want you to hear from me that what I am asking you, not for myself, but for God's mission, for, as St. Paul said it, the glory of God. What I'm asking of you, my dear people, is your heart. Let the Lord touch you so that together we can make this dream come true. And also we have a team of about 120 cabinet members and ambassadors. They'll be making out some phone calls. So when you hear from them, uh, if you see a text or a call from them, give them your gift of time. They are there to help answer any question you might have and to assist you in your discernment so that you can make the pledge and bring it to the parish. Brothers and sisters, I can see the day when joyfully we all gather in that beautiful place and people are coming. You and I, you and I can walk in there with joy because we have been a part of God's dream, of something so beautiful that facilitate the healing touch of God's mercy and human misery. I thank you, each and every one of you, from the very bottom of my heart.